that in. Well, folks, as you can see, I just met with my team here and uh, Secretary Mayorkas of uh, Homeland Security and, uh, and uh, my, uh, my FEMA administrator, uh, uh, Chris Well. They were on the ground in Kentucky yesterday, and I asked for a detailed briefing of what they were able to see, what they found. And uh, they shared with me what they learned, and we discussed how we can do, uh, do more, especially so many of the people who are facing immense, immense loss. Um, and we talked about uh, how we can accelerate and expand uh, federal assistance to those in desperate need. And you saw, I mean, some of you have been there and you've seen, you've been reporting on television, you know, the devastation, you know, before and after. And this is Mayfield, Kentucky. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just devastating. And uh, we've already approved an emergency declaration and a major disaster declaration for Kentucky. I've spoken with the governor several times thus far. And uh, this gives me the tools to provide everything that we can in the federal, from the federal level, uh, from expert search and rescue teams to immediate and longer term help with housing and clean up a whole range of things. And uh, I stand ready to do the same for the governors of other states. As a matter of fact, I'm about to sign a, uh, an emergency request from, this, uh, from Illinois. The governor of Illinois went literally when I finished the trip and signed that. And, uh, and uh, you know, we've also asked FEMA and the key departments to uh, surge federal resources. The thing they most need are power, water, communication systems to get back to some sense of being able to communicate with one another uh, as rapidly as they possibly can. And uh, um, I, as I said, I intend to travel uh, to Kentucky on Wednesday. And uh, with each passing day, the human impact of this devastation is uh, just uh, the depth of the losses are becoming more and more apparent. This is a town with a relatively low average income of under $20,000 a year. It's a town that has been wiped out, but it's not the only town. It's not the only town. That path you see moves all the way up uh, well over 100 miles, and there's more than one route that goes. And so, uh, um, you know, uh, we uh, were also seeing destruction met with a lot of compassion, I'm told. Everywhere they've gone, they had people volunteering, talking, asking for that they not only get help, but how they could give some help. And uh, so we continue to pray for everyone in Kentucky and the other states who are affected. And uh, particularly, my heart goes out to, uh, to the governor of Kentucky, who has lost family himself. Um, it's pretty rough stuff. And, uh, but we're going to get this done. We're going to be there as long as it takes to help. And uh, the combination of state, federal, and uh, volunteer organizations do everything from eventually not only clear the debris, but provide the necessary means to move, get schools reopened, making sure that homes are able to be rebuilt, et cetera. So there's a lot, a lot that needs to be done. And it's and mostly Kentucky here, but not only Kentucky. And so that's, I uh, just want to let you know that's what I was doing. I haven't decided where I'm going yet. We're working on what I indicated to the governor when we talked about this two days ago, was that uh, I don't want to be in the way. There's a lot going on. And, and the, uh, when the president shows up, there's a long tail to follow, an awful lot of folks. And I just don't want to do anything other than be value added. But I want you to know uh, that uh, this administration has made it clear to every governor, whatever they need, when they need it, when they need it, make it known to me, and we'll get it to them as rapidly, as rapidly as we can. And that's what we're doing here in Kentucky. We're going to have to go beyond um, what is available to the federal government. For example, we're able to, FEMA can come up with up to $35,000 in housing restoration. Well, not a lot of $35,000 homes. In the meantime, we can provide everything from hotel rooms and, 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 and places where folks can live in the meantime. But there, there's a lot to be done, and uh, we're just getting it underway. But uh, we're going to work with all the governors to make sure that we can. Yes? Mr. President, what do you believe your own visit there can do for the people who are affected by this? And what is your
major concern about the longest term problems? Is it housing? What part of recovery do you worry about most? Well, what I worry about most in a circumstance like this, because I've been involved in uh, responding to a lot of disasters as a senator, as vice president, now as president just this year, is uh, the uh, peace of mind of people being able to actually put their head on a pillow, lie down on a bed, be able to uh, know their kids are going to be okay. And, uh, and so with the, this is a narrow path, the devastation is, is just stunning. I mean, there's nothing left standing, basically along the path that goes all the way through. You know, do you have that other, let me ask, show that other, uh, uh, you know, in terms of housing. Because I think this is the best way to illustrate just how precise it can be. Go to the one that goes all the way up. This is, takes you. So, if you take a look, well, I want you to point out where we are here. You take a look where, Mayfield and Bowling Green is. That's not, we're not talking about Mayfield now, but all these yellow dots here along the way are residences. And they've been wiped out. They've been wiped out. Commercial and government historical sites and, and you know, industrial sites, it's been wiped out. Would you mind putting one back up for Mayfield? If you take a look, Mayfield sits in that, where that square is on the left. Well, look at all, this is just May, the, the, the city of Mayfield. Residential, commercial, exempt, government and historical, agriculture, et cetera. Just, I mean, they're, they're, they're gone. They're just, and some of you are probably already down there. Uh, it's just devastating. And so, and, and I worry, quite frankly, about, how, how can I say it? the mental health of these people. You come home and you see that, if you made it, and if you haven't, if you lost someone in the meantime, you know, thank God it doesn't seem like the numbers are quite as high as we anticipated, but they're high. You come home, you've lost your husband, wife, mother, father, children, somebody along the line. And what do you do? Where do you go? It's not like if you're making $16,000 a year, you can, you know, get in the plane and head to your relative and, uh, you know, Washington. But I, I, I'm, being, I'm being literal. That's what worries me most, the uncertainty. And it really is something that I've observed in every major disaster I've watched and been on the ground to see. It just is, it just, you can see it in people's faces. And so we just want them to know that we're going to stay as long as it takes to help them. And there's three ways to begin to help. One is the federal agencies that are available, and that's already underway. And, for example, they're setting up in, uh, uh, in all these places, for example, they're going to be uh, um, roughly how many disaster centers do you think will have in the state? We'll have disaster recovery centers in all of the major impacted counties. There will be one place a citizen can go. There will be essentially an ombudsman. What I said to the governors, and it surprised me that they, it pleased me, but surprised me that they repeated it, is that for example, I told the governor of Kentucky, I not only, I'm not expecting you to know all you need. Let us tell you what you can't ask for that you haven't asked for. Let us, let us do our job. I mean, these, these large government agencies like the federal or state governments, it's hard for people to understand sometimes. Let me go in and tell you what you can ask for. And so there is the, gov the federal government, the state government. There's also the nonprofits out there that have been, in fact, involved in all these disasters around the country, and they can provide help and assistance. Right now, for example, I'm told, I hope I'm not mis misspeaking, that the school in Mayfield is being used for shelter now. It didn't get wiped out, but it is not going to be able to be functioned as a school center. So what, how, how do you get these kids back in school rooms? How do you get some semblance of normalcy again? And so we're working like the devil. I'm very, uh, uh, very pleased with the work that, that, that FEMA Director Chris Fall has done, and, 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 I, and I, I know that uh, Homeless Security has done, reached out to these folks. They know we're there. And I just want to make sure there is no sense on the part of anyone in these affected areas 
that they are asking something that they shouldn't ask for. Ask for whatever you think you need and we'll find out. And if we can't provide it for you through a government agency, we'll do our best to find out private agencies that can help. From churches to Red Cross to, to a whole range of institutions. But it's just, um, it's just, it's like when I was walking through the neighborhoods in Louisiana. I mean, see the looks on people's faces. You go to the corner where there were the houses, just gone. People standing in their yards crying. And this, this was two days after uh, the storm went through. So it really is devastating. Now, this is the United States of America, though. The thing that pleased me, with, uh, every, every one of my staff who were down there came back, and at least today, called me on the phone and said, you know, people are already to help each other. They're already asking, you know, how, how can I help, too? So that's what I worry most about. It's just getting some peace of mind and say, look, there is, there is a way to get from here to there. It's disaster now, but there's a way to get there. We're going to do everything we can. And I'm sure, I, I, I believe the Congress will respond if there's any extraordinary need we don't have. Yes, sir. Um, how, how much of a factor do you think that climate change was in this? And, and do you think that would be part of the argument you make to people like Senator Manchin about why the bill back better uh, bill is being different? No, I'm not going to make that argument with him about this. Look, Joe understands. Joe, Joe has as much empathy and concern for these folks, I mean, he's been through some real disasters in West Virginia. He understands. Um, and the honest to God truth is, we're discussing this. I've spent a lot of time on climate issues. And uh, I, I said, we have to be very careful. We can't say with absolute certainty that it was because of climate change. So I'm going to be talking with, with the Environmental Protection Agency, and I'm going to talk with other agencies to determine. In fact, matter of fact, some of it has to do with El Nino. There, there's a lot of things that we don't know for certain. And I don't want to say anything that is not precisely true. What is certain, it is one of the worst tornado disasters we've had in the country. And the second thing is certain is that it is unusual. It is unusual how it happened, how many places it touched down, and the length of the path. So that's all I'm prepared to talk about right now. Yes, Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President uh, this is all happening in the middle of a pandemic. How are you thinking about will these uh, places need more resources because they're also going to be dealing with, you know, possibly rising cases, possibly hospitals getting overloaded, things of that nature? Yes, we're going to look. We have, I have my, the entire federal team, not just the folks going in and making sure there's still people. We're not leaving anybody still breathing under debris. That's the immediate, immediate, urgent, urgent thing. And just to get the food, water to people who don't have it, and there's no place to get it. So that's number one. But number two, there's a whole range of things, including the virus, including the virus and the hospitals. I, I, I've gotten a report, but not the detail I need about the hospitals along the path of this of, of this tornado. But, you know, it's going to, we're going to have to, I'm sure I'm going to be asked to, I'm going to be asking my team to set up uh, uh, um, sites for booster shots and a whole range of things that people still, the, the worst part is their life has to go on as if nothing happened because they've still got to take care of those needs from is their kid going to get in school to whether or not they're going to be able to collect an unemployment check? Are they going to be in this? You know, all of those issues. But one of those issues will be public health as it relates to COVID. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, look, I told you, when I speak to senators to try to, or House members, to, or governors, or any other elected official, to try to convince them that what I'm proposing makes sense and it's not inconsistent with what they believe, um, I do that and then I'll discuss it afterwards, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, sir. Thank you.